In this tutorial series, I'll be teaching you how to make a game using Flutter and Flame. The game we'll be creating is a 2D pixel art platformer called Pixel Adventure. The goal for this series is to teach you as much as I can about game development using Flame, so that way not only can you make Pixel Adventure, which is a fun 2D platformer, but you'll also have the knowledge to make pretty much any 2D game from these tutorials. I'll do my best to upload as much as I can, as quick as I can, so we can go through the process of making a game and that way you can start making games as soon as possible if you need help. In this episode, we'll go through setting up our project files. We'll also download the assets that we need to create our game. Uh, they're completely free, which is awesome. And then we'll even install a free uh, software called Tiled, which we'll be using to create our levels. And by the end of this video, we'll have everything set up to start coding your game, but we'll also actually have a level that we can see inside of our game. So let's get started. To get started, we'll open up our terminal, we'll CD into our desktop, and then we will type flutter create pixel underscore adventure. This is going to build our Flutter project that we'll be needing to use, and then we'll get a folder on our desktop called Pixel Adventure. We need to first open this up, and then we need to create a new folder in here so we can go New Folder, and we're going to make this folder called Assets. Now, Flame is looking for this directory specifically, so make sure that you do call it Assets and spell it correctly, and then we can actually open that up, and then inside here we can make another folder. This folder is going to be called Images. This is also, uh, Flame is looking for this directory, so we need to call it images, and this is where we'll put all of our images. And then we can also make a new folder, and then this one is going to be called tiles. We'll be using this when we use tiled, uh, which we'll need to install. I already have it, but I'll show you how to install that. And then we need this to be named tiles as well. So we can then go ahead and open up our images folder. Next, we need to get our assets, and we can do this by going to itch.io, go to game assets, and then look for pixel adventure. Uh, we can, I will put a link to it in the description so you can find it easier. And then we just need to hit the download now button. And then it does cost money if you want to give money to the creator, which I definitely recommend. But right now we'll just do no thanks, just take me to the downloads. And then we can download Pixel Adventure 1.zip. Perfect. We can then go ahead and open up this folder and we can actually take the folder right here and we can open it up and inside this folder we'll see another folder called free. We wanna open that up and then we can draw, select all of the files inside of the free folder and then drag them into our assets images in our Pixel Adventure project and then we're good to go there. Next, we wanna head on over to mapeditor.org, and then this is the tiled software that we'll be using. It's completely free, and it's our way of making maps. Flame doesn't have like a you know an editor that we can use. It's all code, so we can use tiled uh, to do this. Plus, it works perfect with uh, Flame. They actually have a, a whole project that you can install into Flutter to use it as well. So just like before, we'll download on itch.io, and then we can come down here to hit download now, and then no thanks, just take me to the downloads, and then uh, you can choose your operating system. Uh, I have Windows 10 Plus, because I have Windows 11, so we'll download that, and then we can go ahead and install uh, Tiled that way, which is really nice. Uh, I've already installed it, but just install it and click through. Great, now that we have Tiled installed and we have our images in our images folder, we can go back to our terminal, cd into pixel underscore adventure, and then we can run code dot to open that up in VS Code. Here we have our project opened up. We can actually delete out our test folder because we don't need that. And then we can go into our lib folder and go to our main.dart file. This is where we're going to start. Before we start though, we do need to install Flame. So we can do that by hitting Control tilde, and then we can do flutter pub add flame and that will install the, uh, the dependencies that we need to be able to use Flame. And then we also need Flame underscore tiled, and we can do that by going flutter pub add Flame underscore tiled. And then that will uh, install tiled for us uh, so that we, well, it installs Flame tiled so that we can use tiled in our Flame game, perfect. So now what we can do is we can go in our main.dart file and we don't need anything below our main function. So we can hit control shift and that will select everything. And then we can just delete that out. What we want to do here then is, is we want to replace the my app. And here we're actually going to call a flame uh, component. And we can do this by typing in game widget and it's not gonna populate right away. Game widget, there we go. And then we can auto import from flame game. 
Perfect. And then we can actually save that. Now our game widget is going to take a game, in this case called game. So we need to make this variable right here. So we can go into our lib folder. We can uh, right click new file, and then we'll call this our game name, which is pixel underscore adventure dot dart. And in here, we need to actually create our game. So this is very easy to do with Flame. We can do class and then the name of our game, which is Pixel Adventure. And then what we need to do is we need to extend something. Uh, so we can do that by doing extends. And then we need to extend Flame Game. Flame Game is built into Flame. And this is how we actually make a Flame Game, which is probably why they called it Flame Game. <laughs> and then we can just open that up and save it. And now we can go back to our main dot dart file and then we can go ahead and create a variable with our new game that we just made so we can uh, do pixel adventure that's going to auto import our pixel adventure we'll call it game because that's what it's looking for and then game is going to be equal to our actual class pixel adventure and then we can save that now what we can do is hit f5 and this is actually going to uh, build our game and it's going to launch it with windows so we're going to just wait for that to load and you'll see that we already have a game and there you go we now have an actual game it's a window with a black screen but i promise you this is actually your game running it's just you have nothing to run so you've actually made a game already and we can also switch this to actually run on an actual device as well that's the beautifulness of using flutter is we can close out of here and we can actually launch that on an actual phone um, and here I have it set to horizontal, um, but we can actually launch this on the phone and then get the same result. So if we hit control uh, F5, we can launch that on the phone. All right, and here we go. We have our game launching on the phone. Uh, we do want to change a few things here, though, because this shows kind of like your phone bar, and that's not really what you're used to. Uh, so there's actually some things that we can add from Flame to make this work. Uh, so in our main, dot dart, uh, main file, before we do the run app, we can do a widgets. Uh, flutter binding dot ensure initialize this just means wait for flutter to be initialized before we start calling other stuff and then we can do flame dot do let's make sure we install flame auto import flame we can do flame dot device dot full screen and then if we save this and reload it, we're now going to get it to be full screen. Perfect. And then you can't really tell right now, but we do need to make sure that it's landscape since we're going, well, assuming we're going to be making a landscape game, which we are. So we can do that by default as well. Uh, Flame.device dot set landscape and then this way when we launch our game or anyone launches our game on a mobile device it's going to set it to full screen and also set it to landscape now as you can see uh, that didn't really change anything because our screen's black uh, but it would have been uh, vertical if we didn't do that i just have the phone uh, set to horizontal it wasn't actually horizontal and then uh, at this point, what we can do is the last thing right here, we're calling our game, which is actually our game. Um, in testing, this is okay. This is actually how you want to do it. But in testing, it's going to cause us to have to reload or restart the the um, the app every time we change something um, because there's a lot of things that will just load once. Uh, so what we can do to bypass that is for our game, uh, we can actually call uh, K... Uh, debug, there we go, K debug mode, and this is used, the system will know if we're testing or not, and then what we can do is uh, add a question mark, so if we are in K debug mode, then we want to use actually just pixel adventure, this will recreate our game every time we hit save, which is bad for a real environment, but good for testing, because in that way, uh, we don't have to keep hitting uh, restart, every time we make a change, it'll just automatically change it. Um, you'll see why later. Uh, maybe we'll turn it off and show you how it works. But uh, And then we do want to say otherwise, uh, just use game. So essentially this is, is if we're in debug mode, which is our testing environment, then just use the actual pixel adventure. Otherwise, uh, we want to use game if we're in the uh, real environment. And you can always just change this when you're completely done uh, by just doing game. But it is good to kind of have that debug in there. And yeah, so that's pretty much it for setting up the game. Now let's go ahead and set it up 
so it's no longer this black screen. We can actually create a level inside of Tiled so that we can put it into our, our game. So to do this, we have Tiled open up, and then the first time you open up Tiled, uh, we're gonna have to choose a project. So we're actually gonna create a new project for our game so we can do new project. And we wanna make sure that we're in our project assets tiles folder. This will make it very easy just to put stuff here and then we can call our project pixel adventure because that is our game name. Um, of course if you have any other project you can name it whatever you want but that's what we're going to name it. Now that we have our project done we want to make a new tile set. So we can click new tile set. Uh, this is also going to just be the one that we use for our entire game. So we can just call it pixel adventure but if there was different tile sets that you were making maybe different worlds and stuff like that you can make individual ones. And then what we need to do is go to source and hit browse. And then we need to go back to our um, assets folder this time, go into images. And then there's a folder here for us already called terrain. We can double click that. And then here is our tile set, uh, which is terrain. And the terrain actually says 16 by 16. So you just want to come down here, switch the tile width from six, uh, 32 to 16 pixels on both the width and the height. That's letting tile know exactly uh, what what uh, our sizes are of our images so that we can use them properly. And then we can hit save as, and again, back in our assets tiles file, uh, we can go ahead and just save this uh, uh, tile set as pixel adventure as well, or whatever you want. If it's a different location, stuff like that, those names are fine. So now we have a tile set and it actually does everything for us. We don't need to do anything else, which is really great. Um, but if something was wrong, you could edit it, stuff like that. Now we're going to click this button right here. And then this is going to let us make a new map. So we'll hit new map. And then uh, we want to make sure that the orientation is orthogonal, uh, orthogonal, <laughs> orthogonal. Our tile layer format is CSV. Our tile render order is right down, so you can leave all of these default. We do need to switch our tile size from 32 to 16, so we can switch those to 16. And then for our actual size of our map, you can make a bigger map if you need to, but for our um, pixel adventure, we're just going to make this map at least be the same size of our game screen. Um, so we're actually going to switch this to 40 tiles, which is going to be 640. And then for the height, we're going to switch it to the closest we can get to 360, uh, which is going to be 23 tiles at 368. So 40 tiles, 23 tiles gives us a resolution of 640 by 368. And then we're just going to cut off the bottom eight, uh, which is completely fine with our design because it's going to be a background color anyhow. And then we can hit OK. And then what we want to do is we can actually hit Control S to save this. And again, we want to save this in tiles as well. But instead of calling it Pixel Adventure, we're going to call it Level um, Dash 01. We're going to have a lot of levels in our game. This is how we can name them. You can name this whatever you want, uh, but I'm just going to do Level Dash 01 and then level dash zero two, et cetera. So we can save that. Now what we have here, and I don't know if you've done game development before, but you're gonna have a tile set over here and then you're gonna have your map over here and we're just going to pretty much just take a piece and put it over. So we do wanna make sure that we have a background color. Um, so we can go ahead and click the paint bucket up here or hit F for the fill tool, and then we can actually click the middle icon and then fill in the background. This is our game's background, so we wanna do it like that because this is going to be anything that we haven't designed. The background's going to be this. Uh, we can go then back to the stamp brush for B, and then we can actually start going through and using our textures, uh, our, our tile set, to actually build out a map. So we're gonna just kinda keep this a little simple I will put it three from each side, just so we can kind of, oh, that was in three, uh, just so we can kind of see it. So um, this is gonna be a very basic level, but you can make this level as complicated as you want, uh, but this is how you would do it. It's a little hard to see the lines with this purple background, uh, but we can do it like this. There we go. And then we can fix our mistakes in a moment. Uh, to fix our mistakes, we can just click the uh, purple background and then just drag over them again. And then for the bottom, uh, we do have it like this. Uh, that was actually, uh, yeah, that's fine. And then for our corners, there's different corners depending on where it's at. So this corner is going to be the bottom right. This corner is uh, left. This is going to be the bottom right. This is going to be our top. 
and then this is going to be our left, and then for the top, we have it like this. Now, if you can see here, um, you're kind of using the bottom for the top, and the top for the bottom, and the left for the right, and the right for the left, and that's because we want to make sure that we have an actual uh, blocks in here, because then what we can do, we'll use this later, but we actually want to delete out the section that we're playing. So this is, uh, we're going to create a custom background that kind of repeats on this, you probably saw it at the beginning, the background is uh, is moving, and we can accomplish this later uh, by doing uh, by deleting this out. And this is a lot to do, so what we can do is we can click this little icon up here, the magic wand or W, click it, and then we can just hit backspace, and that'll delete it out, or delete, and I'll delete it out, delete, I'm sorry, and then right click uh, to unselect everything, and then go back to the stamp brush. Now uh, we can come back here and just uh, kind of add something in here, uh, something very basic for right now, but you can definitely make this designed exactly as you want, and we'll get more uh, sophisticated in the future. Um, but we can just uh, do like that. You just grab it over and place the block. So very, very simple. And then now that we're done with this, we do want to rename this layer. Instead of tile layer one, we're going to use this later. So we can call this background. Um, you can call this whatever you want. You can also make new layers by doing new layer. We'll do that later. Um, but this is good enough for being in the background because all of this stuff would be behind my player. Um, and then we'll have an actual background behind this background. Um, but yeah, so we can save it. And now what we can do is we can go back into um, our text editing so we can actually bring this in. All right, so now we're back in our code. We're in our pixel underscore adventure dot dart file. And what we can do here is we can start adding in what we need to to bring that level in. Now, the easiest way to do this is we can go into our lib folder, make a new folder, and we'll call this levels. And then inside that folder, we'll make a new file and we'll call this level.dart. This is going to be a class for our levels. Uh, we're going to give it all of the information that we need for a level and then we can call these when we need to. So let's go ahead and set that up. So to do this, we're going to actually create a class just like we did before. This one is going to be called level and then this one is also going to extend a different component. In Flame, everything is made up of components and Flame gives us a ton of components that we can use to accomplish what we want to and our level is going to extend the world component and we're going to need to auto import that and the world component if we don't know what a component actually does uh, well this actually extends a component but it also implements coordinate uh, transform well you can hold down control and click what you're extending and it will show you kind of what that code does so it doesn't do too much here but it's definitely grabbing the code in and then this also extends other code which you can control and click and as you can see it's a component so you don't need to worry about that too much um, we'll come back to that later when it actually matters uh, but this is extending a world component which allows us to use this as a component now in uh, flame there's uh, three main kind of events that are happening and you're probably used to this in any type of game development environment uh, we're going to have an on load event and an on load event happens when it loads right on load and so what we can do is we can call that right here by doing on load and then uh, VS code is going to auto add that through and what this does is as soon as we add our level to the game it's going to run this code to make sure that it's good to go it only loads once it only runs once um, but it's going to grab that code and run it and one thing that might be a little confusing is we're also returning super dot on load and the super is just referring to whatever things uh, we're extending. Um, there's on load events possibly in um, our world event and stuff like that. So we just need to make sure that we call what we're trying to do on our lo on load event. And then at the end, we're going to call all of the other on load events um, that we come from in this case, which what we're extending. So we can delete out the to do. And what we need to do now is we need to grab in our level uh, that we've created so far. So we can do this by creating a um, an actual component. So we'll do uh, right here, we'll do late and it's called a tiled uh, component and it's not auto importing itself. So we'll do that. Uh, let's try that again. Tiled component. Sometimes it works right away. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, you can do flame, and then uh, sometimes that'll help us. Nope. 
All right, let's try that again. Tiled components. All right, sometimes you will have to type this in for some reason. So we can do import uh, the package and then the package is uh, flame underscore tiled and then flame tiled dot dart. Um, so we can do tiled component and then we'll just call this level. So our level is going to be a component of tiled component. Uh, which again extends a lot of stuff as well and you can actually click it and here's all the different things that we have you don't need to know that too much so that's why i'm making this video but if you're not sure what you can do or call from uh, these components that's how you can figure that out so now that we have a reference to our level uh, we can actually uh, load it and we can do level equals and then we need to do a wait because it's going to take a little bit to load this, especially if the file is big, I would assume. Um, and anytime we use a wait, we need to make sure that our method is async. And then we can do tiled uh, component dot load. And then we need to pass in the file name. So to do this, we already know what the file name is. It's assets tiles and then level.01. Now because I said earlier we have to make these folders specific, we don't actually have to pass in the assets tiles like we normally would. Uh, Flame already knows that they should be there. So all we have to do is pass in the name which is level-01 and then the extension .tmx. And then we're also looking for a desk uh, tile size, and this is actually going to take a vector 2, and it's a 16 by 16, an x of 16, a y of 16, but because they're both the same numbers, we can actually do vector 2 dot all, and then we can pass in the value of 16. This is saying, hey, here is my uh, level to load, and the texture sizes that we're using is a 16 by 16. Now, if we were to call this, we would actually actually get an error because we're not telling uh, Flutter that we even have this file. So anytime we mess with files, we have to go into our pubspec YAML and we have to come down here until we see assets, uncommon out the assets, and we need to grab those in. So we can do assets, that's our folder, and then tiles. Uh, so assets, tiles, and then do the slash, and then this will grab anything that's in this tiles folder. If you don't do this, you'll crash the app until you do it, so make sure that you do it, and then save it, and it'll say, hey, I know that that now exists. I have a reference to that. Now, if we save this, we're not actually going to see anything, and the reason why we're not seeing anything is at the moment when our or load event, we're actually just making the level. We're not actually adding the level to our game. And you're going to see this a lot where you need to make something and then add it to the game. So to do this, there's actually a method just called add, and then we can add what we're adding. So in this case, we're adding our level. So we made the level, which is right here, and then we're adding it to the game. And if we save that and refresh, we still don't see our level. Why? Because again, we haven't added this to our game yet. We've added it in this file, which is perfect. It's going to add it to the game when we call the on load. However, we never actually called level. So to do that, we need to go back to our pixel adventure and we need to call it in there. So to do this, we can open that up, open up the on load, and then we can run the on load here. Now we know how to add something, so we can do so by just calling add, and then we need to call our level, which we can actually do by doing it like this. However, if we call the level, um, that's actually going to work. Um, so we can save that and refresh, but we don't actually see anything. And the reason why we don't see anything is one, uh, we actually messed up our um, assets, images. <laughs> uh, so you can see here, um, it's trying to unload uh, our assets and we never actually said that we have this assets. Um, so what we need to do here is we need to go into our PubSpec YAML again and we need to tell it that we also have assets, images, because again we're referencing that tile sheet uh, in our assets, images, terrain. Um, so we need to call that here as well. I always forget about that, uh, but that's a good thing. Anytime you're using images, you need to add them to your PubSpec YAML and you can go ahead and do it that way. So now if we refresh, we shouldn't get any errors. However, we still don't see anything. 
And the reason why we don't see anything is because our level is there, but we're not looking at our level. So to do this, what we need to do is we need to actually add a camera so that we can go to where our level is. So we can do that by let's come out of our um, onload event real quick. And then we can do late final. Late means we're not going to set it right away, but we'll set it in a moment when we, before we use it. And we're going to call in com camera component. And for short, we can just call this cam uh, just so it's less to type. Now on our onload event, what we want to do is we want to say cam equals, and we want to actually create our camera component. So we can do camera components, and then we're actually going to do with fixed resolution. We already know what the resolution is of our game because we set it, or at least we knew what we were going to set it when we made the level. So for a width, we're going to make it 640, and for our height, we're going to make it 360. Again, our level was 368 but we're going to just make it 360. However we need this world and this is looking for something called world. Now we could make it our level but just because I want the world to know that it's a world uh, we can go ahead and just make final world equals uh, our level and then here we don't have to change it so world is world width of 640 and a height of 360. Now what we need to do then is instead of just adding our level, we need to add our level and our camera that we made. So to do this, we can actually call instead of add, because we're adding more than one thing, we can add all and then we can pass in uh, a list or an array, whatever you want to call it. I forget what these are called in Flutter, a list, yeah, a list. And we can call in both of them. So first we need to call in our camera so that our camera loads first, and then we need to call in our world. And if we save this and then reload it, we should see our level. And there we go, we actually see our level. However, our level is starting in the center, which is not what we want. So to do this, we can actually change our camera uh, um, anchor, and we can do this by cam, dot viewfinder dot anchor right there and then we just need to set it to the top left so this says hey you're gonna be a camera and this is great but I need you to start at the top left so that way we don't run into this problem and if we save this and then reload it we're going to see that it started at that which is fantastic. We now have our level. We actually made a level in Tiled, and we've gone ahead and brought the level into our game. Now, right now we have these black bars, and we don't want that uh, because, you know, it's 2023. <laughs> Why do games have black bars? So we can actually get around this by kind of faking our screen resolution. Because our background is this purple, we can actually just set the background of our actual game to be that purple. And we can do this by doing at override because we're going to override something that's already existing. In this case, the color is black. We're going to override that to something else. And we can do color background color. And this isn't going to work right away because we need to hit control period and import our library dart UI. But now we have the ability to call in the background color. And then we're going to give it a const color. And then the color that we're going to give it is 0xff, which means there's no transparency. And the hex color is 211f30. And if we save this, now our background is the exact same, uh, like our actual game background is the exact same color as our background. So as long as we make sure that there's at least a little bit of purple around the edge of our map, it'll never look like we actually have bars. This is also very useful in case you have a phone that's longer than other phones. It's just going to be more purple, which is really cool. But there you go, we now have a level. But the cool thing is we can update this level. So if we go back into our tiled, if we go back into our tiled map and we actually add in, let's say another thing here and save it. There we go, we've now created a level inside of Flame very easily. And then we can just customize that level however we want. And then we can go from there. So play around with tiled, make the map how you want. Just make sure you have some purple around the edges um, so it looks good and continues on.
you don't want that right up against the edge. And then also um, at the moment, our background is purple, but we'll fix that um, because again, we're making this background purple, um, but we'll switch that out in another episode. It's a little bit more complicated. There's a lot of for loops. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm excited to bring you more. Definitely check out the video on the screen next. We're gonna create our player. So we can actually put our player in the map, uh, AKA in our game. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.